Hi everyone, how you doing? How you doing? Oh, <laughs> where did that come from? <laughs> Never mind, we'll roll with it. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day, night, evening, whatever it is. I hope it's going great. And you're feeling on the top of the world at this time of year, especially in the Northern Hemisphere, where we are heading or possibly are in the depths of winter. Lucky you in the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> Jealous much? I am. <laughs> This is a follow-up video about my catacetinae, what I do, don't do, when I see signals and signs as to when to stop watering. Previously, I did a video. I will feature a card and a link in the description below. And I had a few questions, which I will get to right at the end of when I show you at what point in time I stop watering. Or as in my case, because of my setup, I only flush and leave the reservoir empty, which for me correlates to stopping the watering because I am not adding any water to the reservoir, but I'm maintaining the wicking efficacy of my LECA due to the self-watering setup that I have. If you are growing in organic media, this will also apply because you will be stopping watering when you see these signs and symptoms. So up until now, my catacetinae have been drinking like crazy. I mean, every second day that reservoir was empty to the point I almost missed the mark and my microfiber was on the verge of being dry. Absolutely nuts. I find that the needs of watering of the catacetinae in general really, really increase when the bulbs are starting to plump up. The growth itself, yes, it requires a lot of watering, but then they kick up another notch as the bulbs plump up. And every season I am astounded by just how much water they take in the process of plumping up those bulbs. And then suddenly, I mean, literally, there is a marked difference between having to be on top of the filling up the reservoir as opposed to, hello, I've still got water in here. It really is that radical of a change in my case. So when I recognize that apart from every second or third day I need to fill up the reservoir and suddenly five days later there is still water in the reservoir, I notice that the catacetinae are themselves not drinking as much because of how little water they are consuming to everything they were consuming and absorbing up to the point when I'm like, really? You've still got water? Okay. At that point, I slow down because as long as they've got water in the reservoir, I don't have to add anything. But again, that is in my setup. Now I want to show you the signs if you are in organic media, because they are there, obvious to see. If you haven't seen the video of the Orchid Lingo series that talks about senescing, senes or senescence, I will also leave a card and a link in the description for that because those are the symptoms to watch out for when to stop watering or decrease watering. And here we have superb examples of this happening. I'm going to move away very gently. As you can see, they're in spike. I'm probably risking bud blast at this point in time, but it doesn't matter. This is about information and getting it right for everybody that wants to delve into catacetinae. Senescing is happening right here. You can see the texture of the outer leaf already starting to go to a hay color. It is not as bright green as the next leaf up or further up as a comparison. It is going sort of a yellowy hay color. Very clear to see on the leaf back here, which comes off super, super easily. Normally, at this point in time, I'm already peeling off this remaining part of the leaf because I want my bulbs nice and shiny and I am OCD like that. But I won't bore you with that here on the video, but you see how dry it is. It comes off easily at this point. It's not as tough and we can expose the bulb much, much easier before it dries and hardens. So at this point, the watering reduces to a notch of next to nothing because the orchid as well has water in the pot, but this water has been there for three days. So these are two signs that you can tell 
If you're in organic media and your pot is still wet, don't continue watering. When you see the signs of the lower leaves going sort of yellowy, a uh, yellow hay color. That means they're about to drop and the orchid is heading into dormancy. Yes, she is in spike. That is not a problem. She has reserves in the bulb to bloom. She will bloom even if you stop watering. That's all part and parcel of these catacetinae. They bloom before they go to sleep. In some cases, especially the complex hybrids, there is no rhyme or reason with regards to when they will bloom. So the thing is not to watch for the flower spikes, to maintain the bloom of the flower spikes. The energy is there for the orchid to bloom. The stop watering process begins when you see your leaf bracts going hay yellow. This will happen and then you know watering has to be reduced if you are in organic media, if you're not growing in semi-hydro and if you are growing in semi-hydro, you will know because the amount of water you have poured in prior to this happening, the difference between that and what you have to do now is so, so drastic because your reservoir will still have water whereas a week ago, you were doing it every second or every third day. Sorry for getting distracted, but you see, while this membrane hasn't hardened, you see how easily it comes off the pseudobulb, leaving something nice and shiny behind? Yeah, that is so satisfying. So at this point, spike or not, watering is greatly, greatly reduced if next to nothing when growing in organic media so that the roots can dry out and the orchid can go dormant. My setup being the exception because it is LECA and self-watering. I always keep my LECA damp, but my reservoirs will be empty. I am not going to lift out my Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl because the pot itself is becoming brittle, which means <laughs> there is a lot of activity in that pot root-wise and it is pushing and breaking the structure of the pot. It's very concerning. Well, next year we're gonna have to address this orchid. But at this point in time, stop watering if you are in organic media and just maintain the lecker damp if you are in inorganic media. So let's get on to the questions that were left in the other video. I'm going to use my Signotus lodigesii for this example. And while you look at it and while I talk, this is the back bulb it came with. And this was the dormant bulb that it came with together when it arrived from my collection from Floralia at the beginning of the year. This is the growth it has grown since then. And it's quite a lean to growth because of light training, which I kind of got wrong, if you would like to say. Now, I'm going to turn it around because I'm trying to protect the wobbliness. <laughs> Good word, wobbliness. And I don't want it to be jiggling around too much. The wind is coming from that direction. So we'll just protect it a little bit with the wind. But you see light training, it worked. It exaggerated worked. I'm not sure I'm liking this, but oh well. This is a learning curve for me about this orchid. She is just new in my collection. And next time I know either light from the top or I'm going to have to direct her in a different manner. Now, Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents had a fantastic comment, many observations and a few questions. So she was buying in a catacetum and in her case, it arrived already repotted in bark and the nursery had started to water even though the roots were only three centimeters long. So her questions were, change to a more retentive media or continue to water although the roots were too short? In my previous video, I was talking about best timing to buy catacetinae in any situation would be spring because more often than not, they come as a single bulb with a tiny new growth starting because that is the rhythm of how they operate. And when a tiny new growth starts, it is super easy to then repot and get a catacetinae accustomed to one's media. As the new roots grow, they grow into the media and setup of our choice. However, her questions were change to a more retentive media and or continue to water, although the roots were too short. Now, 
Here's something I have to say about cellars and catacetinae. They are quite pricey and they are going to extort people with back bulbs that possibly on their own would not make it without a secondary or a third bulb to back up all the energy requirements in order to grow a new growth. This is so unfair because for whatever reason, well, I say for whatever reason, I know the reason, it's all about money. Whoa, I don't want that to tilt. It's all about money for them. But we hear with every single other orchid, at least three bulbs if you're gonna do a division, four is better anyway the more the better for the survival of the orchid. So in my case, you just saw that I got a bulb <laughs> and a tiny little back bulb, that makes two. So the challenge is on to actually get a new growth to grow, not have the back bulb desiccate, while new roots are growing and all this is happening and the bulbs themselves aren't big. The question being as well, what are you buying? Are you buying a complex hybrid like an after dark where the bulbs are much bigger or are you buying a species which has in its nature smaller structures? So there's a difference between having a seedling catacetinae as opposed to having what would be considered a mature bulb and still they will only sell you one of those and still you have the challenge of making it work when that bulb grows a new growth and they send it to you with new roots already watered. So we know that we shouldn't be watering our catacetinate too soon so that we don't rot the roots. But what happens if your back bulb starts to desiccate and you're thinking, my goodness, I need to save the energy resources of my back bulb? Well, the conundrum is actually, you may be in a pickle because no matter what you do, the orchid is going to decline based on the fact there is not enough energy to provide for a new growth, new roots, the back bulb not desiccating, and it's not your fault. It is the seller that actually did a naughty thing and sold you something that probably wouldn't be able to survive even in the perfect conditions in the wild. And we moved because I was getting quite worried. <laughs> you saw the gale was passing my little Lottie Jesse I buy, but I have the same struggle. I've come this far with this little orchid. I am not going to risk what is happening now, temperature and weather wise. So we've moved. But anyway, again, too small a bulb, not enough reserves. If a seller has that on offer, I would highly recommend you do not buy it, no matter how much you want the orchid. It would be a shame to lose it based on the fact that there are not enough energy reserves. Do not be fooled that catacetinae will perform just because they have large storage organs. When I divide my catacetinae, I make sure to pass on at least two bulbs, but I am talking this size structure or these size, if they get any smaller, as in the back, there will be three bulbs to give the new owner a chance to make this orchid work for them. They are no different to any other orchid. So sellers do the wrong thing and then huh, we really want that orchid, so we buy it. And it is super, super difficult to actually get a small bulb with a new growth growing. I have lost a few after darks in the past before I managed to hold on to this one because I got a little bulb that was this small, paid a lot of money for it. It was sent to me by the nursery and then a little growth started to grow from the middle section even. And it had no chance because the roots had such a long way to go. The back bulb was already desiccating and I lost several of them at that stage. So when it comes to getting a new bulb in, if you can pick it up from a seller on your own, please do not get one that is teeny tiny, a single bulb with a new growth. If it's teeny tiny, make sure that you at least have two or three bulbs to work with. In my case here, I had two. It gives you a much, much better chance of success, no matter what the seller is trying to tell you and try, try to tell yourself, this is not worth it. It's gonna break my heart and it's gonna break my wallet. And why go there? In that case, I would say, just be super vigilant about what you buy if you are lucky enough to pick it up yourself. 
In my case with my Lord of Jesse eye, I got what I got because it came from Brazil and I was a little bit horrified to say the least when I saw what I saw. Oh, I was like, yeah, great. Thank you very much. And this little two bulb back division here cost me $35. So, you know, I was making the mistake that I just said, please don't do that. But I was buying unseen from a nursery. If you're lucky enough, make sure that at this stage, if anybody wants to sell you little bulbs like this, that you at least have three with a new growth growing, and then you can follow protocol. But in the case of Fernanda Nacimiento orchids and succulents, with her question as to whether she should water or not, even though the nursery had already started watering, I would say no. No matter what they did before you got the orchid, the stage of the orchid will determine what you do next. So if they just went ahead and watered the orchid, well, you know, that's on them. Maybe they don't know what they're doing. Maybe they meant well. But all I can say is do not continue watering if the roots are three centimeters long. If you do not plan on repotting the orchid, do what you know has to be done. Let the roots grow and mature prior to watering. If the orchid arrives wet, that's it. Let it dry out. Let it do what it has to do. Normally roots will continue to develop and grow. It's not just what you receive. When you receive the catacetinae, you think that is the extent of the roots. Nope, they will continue to produce more roots. So if the new roots that it arrived with fail because of their premature watering practice, then let it dry out. More roots are on the way your chances are much, much higher if you let the roots dry out, seeing as it is far too soon for watering. Now, what about repotting then into your preferred media, or in my case, my preferred setup? Well, if you have, let's say, three centimeter roots growing already, change the media. You're still on time. Do what you have to do to get it into your preferred setup based on your environment. The roots are not long enough to have a problem with. However, I would highly recommend at that point then, and I hope you can see it, I'm not gonna move them, I've got the spikes to protect, but you see how high this bulb is here. Now that is its natural habit of growing, but let's just use it as an example. Suspend the bulbs above the media with the roots that are growing brand new, set it into the pot at the level that you want it to be at, finally, but let those roots dry out and then grow into the media before filling up around them again with the media of your choice loosely. And you will be able to tell when your orchid starts to need more water that the roots are mature because of the amount of watering you're doing. At that point, fill the roots up and cover them with media and you're all good to go. Your roots are protected. You've got everything going on in the pot you're watering heavily and your orchid is progressing and hopefully doing really, really well. So the length of the roots when you receive your catacetinae bulbs, I'm gonna think positively and speak in plural, the length of the roots of the new growth, if they're not longer than three centimeters, by all means, put it into the media, the setup that you want, there is still time. However, if you get an orchid that you can feel around the pot, it is quite pot bound. And sometimes we get these plastic flimsy sleeves. You can tell how much is going on in there. The sphagnum moss looks nasty. The orchid is doing great. The pseudobulb has already quite matured and you're getting all this into your collection, but she is new to you. Let her do what she is doing. Clearly the media may have broken down, but catacetinae are resilient like that. They're not going to fuss that much over, oh, I'm going to lose my roots because my sphagnum moss is acidic. Nope. Don't worry about it. You will do more damage removing her out of that pot at that point in time, fiddling, trying to get the old sphagnum moss out and putting in new sphagnum moss because the roots are already well on their way to doing what they're supposed to do based on what you see happening also outside the pot that the pseudobulb is already on its way to maturity, so to speak. So whatever happens in the pot when you receive it, 
pot found lots of roots, a pseudobulb already far beyond the new growth status, as we would like to say. Leave it, keep it that way, water it, fertilize it, cultivate that orchid in that nasty media, and then know that once you see senescing starting on the leaves, you are well on your way to be able to at the point of dormancy, take all the nasty roots off and then put the orchid while in dormancy into the setup, media, etc. that you prefer to grow your orchids in and know and be reassured that your orchid will wake up and grow new roots straight into the new media. But to interfere with a growth that is somewhat mature already in media that comes clearly, clearly nasty and you want to change that at that point in time, that would be a big mistake. There's one more thing to be said about roots that are somewhat immature when they arrive in your collection and you've got a new growth starting. If the back bulb is desiccating to the point that you're getting nervous, I fully understand that that is something that really, really gets to us and we have to intervene because it's one and only energy reserve is going to fail. Imagine if my little Lord of Jesse I here arrived only with this bulb right there. Look, I would have lost the orchid no matter what I would have done. Watering, if the roots are immature, is going to be a detriment to the orchid no matter what. The back bulb may not even recover because we don't know how viable the back bulbs are in our catacetinae. The old roots may have died off and we don't know that. So this is the point where I'm saying, no matter if you water an immature growth with immature roots and the back bulb is desiccating, if you water at that point in time, it's going to rot, see or see, it's going to rot. One suggestion to counteract that and possibly help the orchid is to water from below and let the media do the wicking as far as it can do not submerge the pot. The new roots are not supposed to get wet. That is not the point of watering from below, but the point is to get the roots to grow down maybe a little bit faster if we're lucky. Again, it's up to the seller to be honorable, to do the right thing and give us at least a chance to cultivate our catacetinae when we receive them, as opposed to being money hungry and just selling off tiny little bulbs at exorbitant prices and then we fight and feel like we've done something wrong whereas no we haven't done anything wrong it's just we never had the right chance with something that we were sold i know i'm repeating myself but these guys are expensive and i find it is super important to keep reminding ourselves that yes we get something from the nursery unseen and we cannot choose our own orchid then we are in a conundrum keeping a small orchid hydrated by way of watering from the bottom in my case i submerge the pot to where the holes are let it soak up the water and then hope for the best that's what i've done with this one i think i'm gonna be okay with this one this bulb is looking quite all right when i look at the apex of where the final leaves comes out at least i have two storage organs to take us into the next year another thing i really really want to point out as well when you get your new catacetinae bulbs again thinking positively take into consideration where it came from in my case from brazil that's completely opposite hemispheres and time zones. So the acclimating process of any catacetinae that you receive might be completely out of whack. So when I say purchase in spring, I also think that the majority, for example, of the orchids that we buy in will have already had a few months of acclimating to do in the nursery. Some orchids take six months, some orchids take 12 to 15 months to acclimate. When it comes to an orchid in dormancy and we receive back bulbs of catacetinae that are in dormancy clearly, then we can jump in, clean off the roots, put it into our media and wait for it to wake up. That is the ideal situation, but it doesn't always work that way. So take into consideration when you receive your catacetinae, what is it doing? You might be in winter, they send you a catacetinae and it is 
in full-on growth mode. Now you can chop off all the leaves and force it into dormancy, or you can say whatever this orchid is doing, I am going to respond accordingly. So if you're in growth mode, despite the fact, hello, winter is here, cultivate whatever structure is growing to the best of your ability based on your climate, regardless of your climate. Because this structure is important, even though it might be out of season when you receive your catacetinae. No matter the season, cultivate every structure that you get, despite the fact it is contradictory to what your season is and what a catacetinae should be doing in your environment and climate. If it is out of season, it is in full on growth mode. Bring it on, push it, give it as much light, fertilize it as per usual. Forget whatever the calendar says, forget whatever outdoor temperatures say. The orchid is doing something, it is somewhere new. Eventually, it will go dormant, senescing will start, and then you can cut the watering. And it may take another cycle of growth to finally come into your season and then start doing what it does based on your hemisphere. Never ever, in my opinion, ignore what a structure is doing just because of the calendar date. If the orchid wants to grow, let it grow, make it grow. Your next growth may be a little bit smaller because it's like, hello, it's gonna start growing prematurely or it's just gonna be smaller because it's gonna start later in the summer and then all of a sudden it's gonna go dormant very quickly. But that's all part and parcel of acclimating a catacetinae if it arrives from the opposite side of the world with a different hemisphere. We are not always lucky enough to receive the catacetinae within our hemisphere that have been in the nursery long enough to have acclimated to our hemisphere. I wish but the nursery doesn't operate that way. They want their orchids in and out as fast as possible. So you have an example there with regards to what to do when a catacetinae comes into your collection and it is still growing. And we are, let's say in mid-November and senescing hasn't started yet. I think, I'm not entirely sure, let me know in the comments below whether I've covered every single little aspect of your comment and the questions within. I'd be very, very happy to elaborate on any of what I'm saying here now. Even though this is a follow-up with regards to when to stop watering, I am going to push this video and answer the questions from the previous video. So Jan de Vries said, male versus female blooms. The difference, do other orchids do that? Jan, I am going to do another video when hopefully these spikes bloom out to be able to show you the difference between the male and the female blooms. I can do that with my Jack of Diamonds over here. I can't do it with my Black Pearl, but I'm hoping that having moved them out of their location where they're supposed to mature their spikes and bloom, is not going to cause any bud blast. But with the blooms intact, and I'm hoping, and for the first time I'm gonna get some male blooms on my Jack of Diamonds, I can give you a comparison. So I will make a video separate of that when these two are in bloom and talk about male versus female blooms. I hope you're okay with that. The next question came from Orchids and Angels Obsessions. Do you water them if you have to pot them up when you first receive them? I am hoping, Orchids, Angels, Obsessions, that all that was answered in the whole part of when I was answering Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents comment. It all depends on what you get at the point of getting it, whether to pot them up when you first receive them or leave them be. Maturing growth, leave it be in the pot that it came with, no matter how nasty the media. A new growth, pot it up, change it up before the new growth gets roots that are far too long. And as in the case with Fernanda Nacimiento orchids and succulents, we were talking three centimeters. Your roots are your margin and your growth is your margin. If it is an itty bitty little eye just forming or it's gone up, let's say three, four centimeters, pot up by all means and get those new roots when they grow into your setup and your media. If it arrives and it has a growth that is already way beyond, let's say, just a tiny growth starting, do not change anything. Keep watering, keep pushing that growth. Let the orchid tell you when it's time to stop watering, when it's time to slow down, because you will be seeing signs of senescing. I'm sorry, but I hope that you understand when I now say senescing, and if you haven't seen my video prior, again, links will be in the description. But 
basically the signs of senescing is what tells you when to stop watering whether you receive the orchid new into your collection or whether you've had it for many many years even though it is growing spikes the same applies with spikes that grow as it comes out of dormancy do not water simply because of the spikes watering has nothing to do with spikes or blooming some catacetinae do not have any more leaves on them at all they would look bare like this whole gaggle of bulbs back here and then they start to push spikes but they are still in dormancy so to speak and you haven't watered in months do not start watering the reserves of the orchids it is what it does it will bloom and develop those spikes regardless but if you start watering, you don't know what's going to happen in the pot. Then you might cause problems depending on the time of year. So spikes are not an indicator to start watering. New growth, length of roots, those are your indicators. Whatever the orchid does beyond that during its dormant phase or its blooming phase, the energy reserves of the orchid will take care of the blooming. Goodness me, I had no idea this video was going to be so long. If you're still with me, thank you so very, very much. These were the questions and comments that were left in the video previously. So I am just going to leave it at that. I'm going to wait and see if I did your comments, questions, concerns justice. And let me know if there is any more details as we head into the season of receiving catacetinae and then whatever their growth phase may be. If you have any specific examples, put them in the comments below. Describe your situation, your environment, and what your orchid is like, and let's talk about it, and I can help you per example specifically. But I hope that whew, all this babbling was of use to you and that it cleared up a few things. Jan Vries, I will do male versus female video when the time comes, keeping my fingers crossed that I haven't provoked bud blast with these spikes because I removed them from where they are currently supposed to be maturing and bloom out. Fingers crossed. Thank you so much for watching, for your interest. I really appreciate your time. Please, please have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition, that you stay safe. I'm now going to hustle and put my orchids back in and really hope my buds don't blast. Bye. <laughs>